everybody, and welcome to another episode of Elizabeth Plays Depth with Science! I got it working, I think. If you still can't hear me, please tell me. Uh, let me just post that in the chat. I think it's working, though. I think this is working. Fingers crossed. Uh, it was working when I tried recording it. Um, I, my, uh, beautiful, uh, CPU, uh, decided that it would do an update late last night. Uh, and I have not used it in between now and then. Uh, so, I think that that messed with some of my, um, excuse me, my, uh, streaming program settings. So, uh, here we are again. Uh, hopefully the sound is working this time. It is 4.20, which means it's Thursday. Uh, so we're doing death today. I'm gonna go ahead and try to find a match while we, uh, get our disclaimers out of the way, as per usual. Disclaimer number one, all of the views, opinions, statements, etc. expressed on the show are my own and are not necessarily those of any of my publishers or employers whatsoever. I take full responsibility. Second, we'll be talking some science on the show, as per usual. Uh, and although I do my research, there's always a possibility I might misspeak and or get something wrong. So, fact check me before talking about this stuff to your friends, uh, to avoid making us both look like idiots. And, uh, if you're watching this on YouTube later, then I will have put all of the science stories or links to all of the science stories down there in the comments. So, scroll down, go read them, educate yourself from people more knowledgeable than me. Um, and, uh, we're still waiting for a match. This may take a while. We're playing a little bit usual, later than usual. I think this is, is this the first week we're doing the later start time? I think it is. Um, uh, it's good to be back playing Death. We still do not have a game for Saturdays. I've been looking into a couple of different options. Right now I'm leaning towards, uh, either doing a, a Portal playthrough. It wouldn't be the first time, but it's been a long time, and I love Portal so much. Um, or possibly Surgeon Simulator. Uh, I looked at a couple of different other games. Uh, they, they all looked like a lot of fun, but none were necessarily going to be great for streaming. Uh, basically, we need an XCOM build placement. But there will be no stream this Saturday. Just want to get that right out of the way. Saturday, the 22nd, no stream. And there's a good reason why. I'm going to be at the March for Science. I'm going to be down on the National Mall here in Washington, D.C., carrying a sign and listening to awesome scientists talk about the work and uh, advocating for uh, science funding and generally caring about science and all of the wonderful things that the Science March stands for. So, I will be there and not here. And frankly, if there is a Science March anywhere near you, which there should be, unless you live out in the middle of nowhere, which I totally get, um, you should be out there too. That's just my personal opinion. If you're watching this show, you probably care at least a little tiny bit about science. Or sharks. You know, there's sharks in this game. If you care about sharks, go to a March for Science. Carry a sign which says, save the sharks. Because shark science is definitely science. Very important stuff, too. Anyway. Enough about sharks and the March for Science. And this is an Olmec map, so we're going to get some flares, light it up a little bit in there. Who have we got playing with us? Cool. I had a bit of a fun uh, experience after work today. I don't usually talk about work today, but one of the things I wrote came across the desk of one of the, uh, somebody else who works at a different institution who went to school with me, so that was... That was kind of fun. Just in the normal course of doing our jobs, definitely made me feel like a, you know, fully blown science communicator. Doing my job. Felt good. Who are we waiting for? Leon! Hurry it up, Leon. I want to go swimming. We, we actually have some, sort some, uh, excuse me. We actually have some uh, shark news to talk about today, but we'll do that at our first break. Uh, it's not science news so much as this science policy news. Or just regular policy news. But it's about sharks. So, definitely applicable. I do try to have uh, marine related news on Thursdays. Save it for Thursdays because of the theme of the game. 
Subnautica is generally better for like uh, exoplanet kind of news. Although, frankly, exoplanet news is the kind of stuff which cannot wait. If there's a oh! Jeez, what was that noise? I don't like it. I think that must have been part of the new update. Having a music sting. Really irritating. Oh no! Two pressures! Uh, that means that next time I respawn, it's going to be time to get some, um... Oh, what's it going to be time for? Probably some med kits. Because it is possible to kill these guys and get away with it. Very possible, in fact. But, oh shoot. Well, the twins were worth it. That was so weird. I think that might just... I, it hasn't happened again, though. So, maybe it was just unique to that shark? I don't know. And we need some light in here. So we get some flares or something. Oh, wait, I just died. I guess that's me. I guess I'm the one getting the flares. Like jettison the treasure and also shoot the shark. Ow! Did I shoot him? I shot him at least a little bit. Oh, yeah, that, that didn't last. Long. Man, these two are a team. A darn effective one. Ah, he's bleeding. Yes. Goodness for shark shields. I think I'm outside of it now. Uh, I wish I could swim out there and maybe keep a scouting eye out, but yeah, I don't think that's happening. Where is it? Where is it? Where is it? Where is it? Shark. Oh. 
Also, don't go outside. Oh, there's one! There's one! Oh well. Didn't turn my back on it. Not that I can do anything too cool about that at this point, anyway. Prepare yourself, Steve! Get out of there! Where's the, Where's the last diver? Oh, there he is. Yeah, you won't last long. For the heart. Good game, folks. Let's see if we can't get into another one. So, uh, let's just get, get some shark news out of the way, because otherwise I'm just going to keep referring to it for forever. Um, there was a, uh, some sad news out of, um, Western Australia this past week. A uh, 17-year-old girl was, uh, surfing off the coast and was, uh, killed, actually, by a shark. Now, I don't like to make too much of shark attacks because they are extremely rare. You're not going to attack, get attacked by a shark if you're just out at the beach, laying in the surf. Um, there's a number of theories why surfers are especially vulnerable to sharks, but, uh, this girl, unfortunately, uh, was attacked and did lose her life. Um... There's a photo online of the surfboard that she had, and you know the you know, the cartoon image of like a you know a surfboard with like just a serrated bite taken out of the back of it. It looks like that. Um, the crawling theory right now is that it was a great white shark, um, which attacked her. Um, perhaps thinking she was a seal. It's a little hard to know the uh, mind of a great white, but unfortunately she did not make it. Um, what this means, though, is that, uh, in that part of Australia right now, politicians are debating whether or not they should have another shark cull. Now, they have had, they have tried to do some shark mitigation, uh, uh efforts in the past. It is very sad. Um, but her family, I think, said, I can't remember exactly the wording, but they said at least she died doing what she loved, which was surfing. She loved to surf. Um... The problem with uh, keeping great whites out of uh, surfing areas is that, uh, first, uh, they're really big, um, ob perhaps obviously. So um, things, the only real way to, the, the best way probably to keep them out is going to be uh, exclusion nets, which are basically, they're exactly what it sounds like, just a big old net that you stretch across, um, that you stretch across the area you want to keep them out of. But that's a bit of a problem in areas with big waves, because uh, that often gets, uh, there's a pretty steep incline from really deep water. So if you want to keep them outside of the whole best surfing area, you need to keep the nets pretty far out. Which, um, is expensive. Exclusion nets, I should mention, are very expensive to put out and maintain. Oh, we got Goldfish McThunderdick in here. This is going to be a tough one. We are probably not going to last very long, but we are going to have a fun time of it. In the meantime, um, some other things which have been bandied about are the shark cull, like I mentioned. Like, they will actually go out and hunt the shark, the Jaws style, you know. But the problem with that is great white sharks, one which probably attacked this poor girl, have a huge range. They'll migrate all over the Pacific. Um, over the course of their lifetimes. So, um, if you have, uh, if you shoot one great white, or you poison it, or whatever else you do to it, um, it might be, it might well have been just passing through. Um, I just realized his vest says one-way scuba. That's a bit dark, I guess. Well, we're talking about a dark subject, I suppose, anyway, so it's kind of appropriate, I guess. Um... Maybe it's the first shark attack that gets me that music sting. Let's just stick this in here. Start getting some treasure. Uh, so yeah, shark calls are an option, but they're not a good option, per se. Um, there's also the possibility of, uh, shark shields. Some people bandied that around. Yes, they are a real thing in real life. Uh, they don't work really like you see in, uh, depth. Um, they are small devices which you wear on your person, and the theory goes that they, uh, emit, oh, did I 
they emit an uh, electrical uh, current, which is going to be repellent to the sharks. Where is it? Um, so it's not so much a shark shield as it is a shark repellent. Like, like mosquito repellent, but for sharks. Are you coming in through the ceiling like I would do? actually a, uh, a really experienced depth player. Like, you'll run into him all the time. He almost always plays shark. Um, yes, silly name, but commands a lot of respect. That's good reason. Oh, that's a pretty skin. Oh! See? Just killed me. Just like that. Uh, what do we want here? Lead... Pick up a consumable in the next room because. Ah! Missed me! How'd you miss me? How do you keep missing me? You are mad at your job, shark. Yeah, you stay out there. Shark shields are an option they bandied about. Um, exclusion nets. What else? I wrote it down a list here, but I don't necessarily want to look at screen. <laughs> I'm just bad at dying. I am very bad at dying. I'm, sometimes I'm bad at staying alive, too. It's a, it's a bit of a trade-off. Does the shield work the same on all sizes? That's a good question. I don't actually know. Um... I think, I don't think they sell different, uh, shields for different body sizes. So even if it does, it may just work differently, but with different efficacies. Um, let's get this off to Steve here. Ah! There you go. Anyway, the cola is a bit controversial, not only because of the whole, you know, it's a great white, ne ne won't necessarily work issue, um, but also because this has actually been tried before in that part of Western Australia. They had, um, a couple years ago, there was a, uh, a spate of shark attacks, and um, people were saying, oh, we should really, um, we should really do something about this. Um... But uh, it was very unpopular with environmentalists who said, you know, sharks are super endangered. Yes, these are attacking people, but we still shouldn't really be killing them. We don't ne necessarily know how effective this is going to be. So. I, uh, me? Do I play as a shark very much? Um, I do a bit of both. Uh, I'll play as a shark when, uh, there aren't too many- when the wait time isn't too long. But, um... Most- on days like this where it's, you know, a good two, three minute wait for a match, I'll mostly play Diver. Just cause I don't like to keep people watching the stream waiting around for too long while I blather on about science. Not that the science isn't fun, but... playing shark a lot more. There are other games where you can play as various different sea critters, but can I shoot at once? No, and there's no blade damage on it. 
but this one feels like the, it feels the most realistic somehow. I have no idea if this is actually what it's like to be a shark, but it feels pretty good. You know? Instead of streaming this Saturday, I'm thinking what I might do is change my streaming program. First of all, because OBS has been giving me some difficulties lately, for various reasons. And uh, second, because I want to, excuse me, I want to get it set up such that I can actually see you guys' uh, chat messages on screen in front of me instead of having to look over to my uh, screen off to the side there. Stretch from the game. The uh, Mako Shark next? You got it. That's a good shark to play on any map. That's only a. The only map where it's no good to play as a Mako Shark really is, uh, Stash. And even there it's not so bad. Uh, final room, what's gonna be good? Oh, what the heck, we'll go for a med kit. Everybody loves a med kit. Nobody did the stupid thing where where you sit over by the uh, sit over by the shark shield. Hey, I got a med kit. I have an excellent foresight if I do say so myself. Look at that. Not enough foresight to reload my gun. Oh, bleed out, goldfish. I know you. Ah, uh, you just want to take out speed, don't you? You want the achievement? Well, I won't give you that satisfaction. found about the game was three years ago. <laughs> it's, uh, yeah, it's been around a while. I only started playing about, um, eight, nine months ago? Yeah, because I, I, I was definitely playing by last October, because I was there for the Halloween event. We'll try to find a shark match next. See if we can't play big go. I know, that hardly ever happens. Oh, but don't you want to give them the achievement, really? Rather than killing yourself? Like, I don't know, I like fighting to the bitter end. Kinda sucks for everybody else in the room, I guess. That's fair. Anyway, while we're waiting for a shark match, because this could take a little while, uh, there's some cool science news out this week about, um, naked mole rats. Um, naked mole rats well, they're not my favorite rope. They're right up there. They're just the weirdest critters you can imagine. They've got, you know, they've got this super wrinkly skin. They're as closest to an insect as you'll find in the mammal world. Ooh, Antiquo. Good call on the Mako. This is gonna be a good map for Mako. Mm. Um, they're just the, and they, they, they make warrens and they live in colonies like ants. Hey, Sharky Gaming, how's it going? Good to see you again. Um, hmm. I 
actually taking photos outside. Flash doesn't light out my window. Um, the, um, uh, yeah, they're just really weird animals. Um, but there was a study out today. Uh, well, then I can't shoot and don't play FPS, because I really enjoy playing as a shark. It's a lot of fun. It's true I don't can't can't really shoot and don't play a lot of FPS though, to be honest. When I used to play TF2 with my buddies, I was always pyro because can't aim for squat. I also didn't have a um, a good gaming setup back then. But anyhow, naked mole rats. So um, there's a study out this week showing basically that um, you can take uh, oxygen which most mammals really need to live. You can take all the oxygen out of a room with a naked mole rat in it, and a naked mole rat will be just fine for up to 18 minutes. Uh, you put a human in a room with no oxygen, they will die very quickly. Um, use Restream Chat if you, if it has sound alert. Yeah, like I mentioned earlier, I'm gonna be, um, I'm not going to be streaming on Saturday this week, because I'm going to the Science March, March for Science. Uh, instead, I am going to be taking some time Saturday evening to switch around my swimming, streaming programs. Ah! I'm going to, uh, try and get it so that all my alerts are on the same, in the same window as my game. I have in the past. It's been a while. Uh, I used to play it a lot with my brother. Just casually. He wanted to get good. But, uh, I never got there, so... Attack! Let's get out of here! Seal! Seal time. A couple seals, actually. So yeah, naked mole rats uh, can survive uh, with very little oxygen, turns out. Um, researchers did some uh, investigating into exactly how little oxygen they could survive without, and um, they can survive in a room with 5% oxygen basically indefinitely. You come out here, I eat you, that's how this works. We all know this. Don't go running after me because I will find you and eat you. Swimming casually away from me as these seals do. Not so good. Exploit Gamecaster has overlay. Yeah, I've definitely, uh, but I can't switch games. Like in the middle of a stream? I don't switch games in the middle of a stream in, in the middle of a stream anyway, so. With very rare exceptions. serrated teeth we do and we'll get hemogenesis so we don't need to worry about seals so much the only times i really switch games in the middle of the stream is uh if i'm having technical difficulties like if something is just not working for whatever reason if something if it was a bad update no longer really works with uh, my setup oh now steve opens it up and it's time to get going I would need to turn off uh, exploit anyway. I've heard people say I, this. I might be confusing them. Exploit also lets you stream to YouTube simultaneously. I think 
And since I host a lot of videos there anyway, increasing number of videos, now I've actually got my act together, uh, that would be in. Have I heard about platypuses? Ooh! No, I haven't heard about that. That is messed up. I, as in, like, they just found the platypus body and no head? I mean, I could see, I guess I could see why people would want just a platypus body for, like, a souvenir. Like, dried platypus head? But really, yeah, what's wrong with people? I would buy a platypus head if it had been farmed. Farmed platypus head would make sense, I guess, because they were being cultivated for that purpose, but platypi are hard to breed. Like, you very rarely see them in zoos for a reason. Wild ones? That's pretty inexcusable. They're such cool animals, too. Like, the, the duckbill platypus has ten sex chromosomes. That's my favorite, that's one of my favorite factoids about them. Like, you know, humans have an X and a Y chromosome, they have, you know, five X's and five Y's, or, uh... What? I can't hit anything! I'm getting too excited about platypi. Or just ten... X chromosomes if they're female. Ah, somebody's got a nut gun! You try to take out my friend, you gotta deal with me. That's how this works. Sometimes. Under the best of circumstances. Are they gonna do that thing where they camp out in the dead whale? That's really annoying, but it's a smart thing to do. venomous mammals out there. Because the males have those spurs on their heels. Use them to stab other males during the breeding season. Also, they're monotremes, which uh, comes with a whole other set of awesome adaptations. Like the whole fact that they lay eggs, that's fun. I always forget, young platypi are called pups, I think. I think it's echidnas that are called pups. You wanna know what's the worst part about being sick? Yeah. That's that's pretty that's pretty bad. Somebody afraid from the toxin, maybe have the kids. That would make sense if there were a lot of them, but there aren't. Platypi are pretty darn rare. They're very shy. Um, if you walk up to a platypus, their first instinct is to run away because you are bigger than them. They're not going to try and stab you unless it's like their absolute last resort. It's not like, uh, venomous snakes. Listen, if you are afraid of wild animals in Australia, there are many scarier things out there. Like sharks, for example. Or spiders. Or snakes. There's a lot of very venomous snakes in Australia. Yeah, somebody's doing whale camping. Modify are not your top concern. Unless you have very messed up priorities. Yeah. Not hiding the bodies indicates a flagrant disregard for pretty much everything about wildlife protection. Like, that's that's the attitude which says, I am poaching these things and you can't stop me. Ah! Wait! Wait! Ah! Ow! Probably should have gone for a nimble fins at the stage in the game, but what the heck. You gotta come out and try 
try and get me out here? Yeah, no? Jason, Sharky, me, everything? oxygen environment for 18 minutes with no ill effects, and uh, in a 5% oxygen environment for 300 minutes. 10 minutes in, an, in a 5% oxygen environment would probably kill a person. Uh, but they just seem to have no problems. Uh, they, in the uh, science article I read, uh, in, the, in the article in the Science Magazine, I should say, uh, the researchers described just sitting there and watching with, watching with bated breath for the mole rat to pass out, but it just kind of ran around, sniffing at things, doing its mole rat business, um, and not seemingly not bothered at all by the fact that uh, it was going to be a little bit harder to breathe. Um, you know, I was thinking that this wasn't necessarily all that relevant to depth, but it kind of is. Because one of the things that, when, that you have to take into account whenever you're planning a dive, like the protagonists of this game do, multiple times on a daily basis, depending on how many of them get eaten, um, is uh, you have to plan out how much oxygen you will be consuming um, and planning accordingly. There are different mixes of air that you can use, which have different levels of nitrogen and oxygen and uh, other gases if you want to get really technical and you're really good at it. Um, 
that can uh, let you go down even further, stay down longer, and not suffer ill effects. But um, those are def can definitely be a problem. Sharky can live in no air room forever. Yeah, he's a shark. As long as he's got water, he's good. Have I seen the vitamin movie? Um, I have not seen the vitamin movie. Let me give it a quick Google. I don't usually talk about medical stuff for the very good reason that that's my day job. Let's see. Anything that claims to cure cancer, though, that, um, that sets off some red flags for me. Not gonna lie. The power of healing through vitamins. That does sound, that sounds a little, that's uh, sending off some, uh, some alarm bells for me personally. Um, overdosing with vitamin C is not necessarily good for you. Um, I don't know all the, I don't know if the ill effects off the top of my head, but I have definitely been warned about it by a doctor when I had to take some supplements for a while. Um, and I'm pretty sure it can't cure cancer. Like, I think we would have heard about that by now. Um, the thing about vitamins and most other supplements, actually supplements don't go through as rigorous a process, but um, we are pretty well aware of what massive doses of these things fed to people will do on a grand scale. Um, and uh, if one of them did turn out to cure cancer, then this would be a massive study and we're bring fame and fortune to the guy who discovered it. Um, so yeah, I, 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 I haven't seen this movie. But color me skeptical. Another three hour delay for your flight. You're trying to get out? You're trying to you're trying to go somewhere? That's a bummer. Um taking votes for shark. You've got about 30 seconds before this time's out. Um I'm gonna go make a unless somebody complains. So, um, yeah. There was a study about vitamin C and sepsis, I think. Let me do that give a quick Google while you guys are voting on shark. Yeah, oh yeah, some guy claimed, some doc, Dr. Barry Fowler, I'm going to put a link in the chat, claimed that, um, Mako, I gotta vote for Mako, I gotta vote for Tiger, uh, I'm going to go Tiger with this one because I went Mako last time, and, uh, Sharky's waiting for a flight and that's really rough. There is a, there's a, there we go. There's a doctor who claims that he can, uh, has great results in treating sepsis with massive doses of vitamin C. So, um, there you go. But, like I said, I don't really talk about medical stuff all that much on my show because, uh, I do that for my day job and I get plenty of that then. So... gonna be tough for Tiger, but we'll see. It'll be easier once we get into the larger maps. Let's open this thing up a little bit. You say you've worked for the pharma companies. What, what did you do? I'm just curious, because like I said, I love hearing about uh, when people work in scientific fields. Ah! Couldn't even get that guy on the way out, jeez. That's- a, that is that- that- I definitely remember that as being one of the things. Kidney stones are... a problem. And you do not want those. Those are very painful. And difficult to get rid of. What?! Get back here! operator in packaging. Okay. That's interesting. I really should have gone, Mako. 
map is too full of tight spaces for Tiger. But it's worth a shot. Ah! I damaged some of the divers, though. That's good. Full-time gamer and a shark watcher. Have you ever watched some of the Monterey Bay Aquarium's, uh... Shark cams? Or their, uh, deep water? Um... Deep water exhibit cams. There's some really be you can see some really beautiful stuff on there. I mean, yeah, it's always the same old fish because it's an aquarium tank, but man, they're majestic. They have great whites in there sometimes. Not right now, I don't think. What the? That was weird. It's like a traveling shark shield. black hole. if this were related to that. Should have busted some holes in this back end of the ship so I could have a way out. That would have been smart. Have you actually died with great whites? Because if you had, that would be awesome. To see a real life cookie cutter shark someday. I won't, because they live way down deep. But I'd love to. They're so cool. I just go in and take bites out of them. One bite, circuit like it leaves a circular hole, and then they just get out of them. I had an opportunity to go sw diving with the sea lions once, and you know what? I actually chickened out. I was like a, I was like a 13 at the time. My family went on a cruise to uh, Baja, California, and um, one of the activities they had, because it was a really cool cruise, a uh, tiny boat, was um, diving with sea lions. There was a sea lion colony that they had permission to dive near, and um, I, I chickened out. I'm ashamed to say, I just got horrible anxiety about the whole thing. So I just thought about, you know, like, wild dogs, basically, because that's kind of what they are. They're friendly, but they're wild. I thought about how fast they were, and their teeth, you know? I mean, yeah, they're not sharks, but I was kind of scared of them anyway, at that age. And now I really regret it, because I don't know if I'm ever going to have a chance to dive with sea lions ever again, but... Monterey Bay Aquarium has happened in the past. 
they don't keep them for very long. They keep them, they catch them, they keep them in an aquarium for as long as they feel safe, and then when they start to not do so well, or, um, or if they just get too big, then they release them again. They tag them first so they can get some uh, useful inf scientific information out of them, but... Ah, dang it! I thought I could wriggle down in there and grab them. Yeah, this shark is really too big for this map. Yeah, that's not a great kill count this time. Yes, you did well. Look at that, you're top of the treasure map. Generic white boy, you did great. Alrighty, uh, I'm gonna do an either map, see what I get. Um, good to do your turn as a diver if possible. I firmly believe that. Uh, let's see what else was on the docket for science today. Oh! Uh, who here suffers from allergies? Like environmental allergies. Me! Uh, I have allergies to dust mites and dust in general, pollen, a bunch of different stuff. Spring is, spring can be hard. Uh, but one of the things which we actually breathe in a lot is, uh, chitin. Chitin is the stuff which, uh, insect shells are made out of because, believe it or not, your environment, even if you live in a very clean house, is full of insects! Uh, there's dust mites, there's termites if you live in a very old house, or even a new house which has problems. There's just random bugs which wander in from outside. They're all over the place. And when they die, their shells, which are made out of chitin, uh, will uh, break down over time and dissolve. So the air is full, whether you like it or not, of teeny tiny invisible shards of chitin. So, I want to skydive into the ocean. I'd rather skydive onto land, honestly. Um, oh, what? We picked either. We got a shark. What? All right, I'm going Mako this time because we did run a round of tiger. So, um, but yeah, the air is full of chitin, and some people have, uh, some people actually... This is, a, this is a slightly different topic, um, because I don't know if it's necessarily an allergy, but anyway, scientists have long known that, uh, chitin, tiny fragments of chitin, could be damaging to the, uh, lungs, uh, over time. But, uh, what they have found now is an enzyme, a uh, protein in your body, which, uh, actually breaks down chitin as it enters your body. Uh, they did experiments in mice in which they, um, uh, basically took away the ability for the mice to produce chitin. And, um, what they discovered was that, uh, mice without chitin had, um, horrible fibrosis when they got older. Uh, what that means, basically, is that their lungs got all scarred up and they did not have as much oxygen in their bodies. Uh, which, and they, uh, were more likely to die, and generally were not as healthy as mice with this, with functioning versions of this protein. Ah, shoot. Missed my lunch. You always wake up with a nose full, but you smoke everything. Ugh. Honestly, the smoking might have something to do with it. Hate, hate to, uh, hate to make a guess there, but, um, that would be my first guess. Allergies probably aren't helping, though, if that, if you also suffer from that. So... Um, so yeah, they found this enzyme which, uh, is probably, which is, which in mice at least, uh, breaks down chitin, uh, and helps protect the lungs from scarring from these tiny shards of insect shell over the years. Um, which is pretty nifty. Um, and fun fact, in humans, uh, people with an overactive version of this enzyme are less likely to have asthma. So that seems like... Oh dear, that's a mine. So it seems like this protein, this enzyme might function the same in humans. Needs more testing. Oh, hornet stings. Yeah, my dad is allergic to, uh, to bees. I think I might be allergic to these things too, but I've never, to, to like hornets, bees, etc. Um, but I've never actually been stung, so I don't know. I carry an EpiPen just in case. I'd rather not find out, basically. So there were 
around, because I've actually spent a fair amount of time outside over the years, but... I have terrible reactions to mosquito bites. Oh, good place for a mine. You eat hornets for breakfast? That seems, uh... That seems a little crunchy. I'm all for experimenting with eating insects, though. Insects are an underutilized source of protein in this world. Cricket flour? I'm all for it. Haven't had a chance to get my hands on any, but I'd love to someday. Don't you dare go out the back of that boat, or I will eat you. Look at all that treasure just falling to the ground. Useless. Ah! Dang it! Well, I wasted his shot at least, so the other shark can maybe get him? No? You're useless. Insects are good? What kind of insects have you had? I know somebody for a, one of my friends for a while was looking into soldier fly larvae as a source of protein and how some people might wind up using that. I don't know how that panned out though. You know what I've always wanted to try though? Honey ants. Honey pot ants. Excuse me. They're, uh, they're a species of ant, um, which has specialized, uh, workers. And some of them will, uh, hang upside down from the ceiling of their nest. And, um... Excuse me a moment. Uh, where they will consume as much nectar as they can possibly hold. And, um... This, uh, and they basically turn into giant living honey pots, just these giant sacks of honey uh, clinging to the ceiling. I've always wanted to try those. Try eating those, because they look like they would be very sweet. Like uh, bubbles of honey. Ah, there you are. Well, there you were. Get back here. Somebody's got a net. That's good to know. I can hear it. You want to come out here? Come out here and say to my face. There we go. Ah, somebody's shark shield. I'll go out and quick grab a seal while uh, that timer runs out. I did not get any genesis yet. You just grow them for your birds. All right, because you've got that whole bird colony. Mealworms are kind of cool. I remember once I was on the subway and uh, there was a girl sitting on the uh, seat next to me, like a little girl, like maybe like 10 years old, and she just had this giant tub of mealworms on her lap. I really wanted to ask her what they were for, like what, what kind of pet she had. But uh, I didn't get a chance. Whatever her story was, I'm sure it was interesting. What, are we just gonna sit here and wait? Apparently. Or we're gonna go in through the top. Because we're impatient. Or, nope, 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 we're doing this. Ah, dang it. Thought I could sneak up on him. Mm, let's go for this. And go at double time and hemogenesis and. Uh, we're in close quarters, so. That'll be do it. That'll do it. Poke your head out, I eat you. We all know this game. We all know how this game works. Is there a mine down here? No. Nope. Ironically not. So let's go for it.
explosives. What kind of animals does your uncle have? I should have, I, uh, Red Siskin, I should have mentioned it. Because I know lizards tend to enjoy mealworms. along. That's a fun replay. Pose death cam. That's called Nimble Finn. Get a little bit more stamina. Because we need to eat six divers in a hurry. Because it's almost end of game time. Fortunately, they're on this open water stretch, which everybody hates. That's a good placement of the, uh, turret, though. Applaud them for that. That's not a hole, that's just a glitchy bit of map. Somebody's got a harpoon with explosives. Oh, that's fun. Thanks, Sood. You're cool. <laughs> Sharks can't actually do that in real life, right? Like, they can do a tail snap, um, but it just makes a really loud noise. It doesn't actually do that much damage. It's a stun thing for fish, but we're not fish, so it'll be really loud, but, um, not necessarily damaging. Two shark games, one, one shark, random shark game in a row. Next game, we're probably gonna get sorted in as a as a diver. Let's see how this goes. Oh, well, that was fast. Oh, a crude map. We haven't done that yet today. That's fun. I'm looking down at my list here. We did, we did, I didn't talk about river piracy on Tuesday, did I? I might talk about that in a bit. However, I am going to grab a cough drop because, like I mentioned, it's allergy season, which means... If I start talking for too long, I start to have a sore throat. Mm. Who is in our game with us? I should have done that before buying, before buying stuff. Nobody I really recognize, but that doesn't mean they're not good. I am 
into depth, but uh, I do only really play once a week, so. These seem like two opposing messages right here, Silver so or Silver SS, depending. Like, pick one. Pick one and go with that. Unless one of them is sarcastic. Ah, he's got keyboard cat. Keyboard cat, that is a, that brings me back. A long time since keyboard cat was a thing. Oh, I forgot to swap out my skin! Skin for the pistol, shoot. I want some recent ocean related news. First line. Oh, the giant shipworm story! Oh, that was so cool! Yeah, I saw that on, um. We, I, I saw that before the Subnautica stream, but I didn't really get a chance to talk about it that much. Ooh, a bull. Bull shark. Nice skin, too, with the, um... It's like scoots on the top. Oh, we can swap it out. There we go. Yeah. Oh. Wait a minute! When did I get that? Cool. It's got, like, an animation on it. Anyway, we just got this one. We just, uh, let's, let's go with this one, because why not? Well, let's get some scouting going, so to speak. I don't know why I dropped it in there, that's useless. The cool thing, I, I, I'm sure you know this if you read the Shipworm article, but uh, I, th I think it's just so cool that something, that an invertebrate that large can remain basically unknown um, until relatively recently. I mean, they had the, the shells, like, uh, like the article mentions, um, or at least I assumed that article mentions. The one I did, I, I read did. Uh, and then they actually dug down deep enough, it was like three meters down, something like that. And, uh, just found these giant oozy tapeworms. Uh, not, not tapeworms. Shipworms! Tapeworms can get much bigger. And they live in your guts. And eat your food. They don't eat your guts. They eat your food out of your guts. Fun tapeworm fact, which I have never been able to get out of my brain and kind of wish I hadn't learned in the first place. So naturally I'm going to inflict it all upon you. Um, in some parts of the world, tapeworms have historically, and are still used today, used as a dieting aid. The idea being, presumably, that, uh, if you have a tapeworm in your guts, uh, it's eating, um, it's taking your nutrients, so you are not gaining weight. And it does have that effect, but it also has the side effect of you have a tapeworm inside of you. And you are have a giant parasite living in your intestines. Which is fun. Of course you can't get rid of it. There's deworming agents for that. But I don't know, it just seems like uh, more trouble than it's worth. To me, personally. Why are you guys not picking up this stuff? Other than the sharks. If you don't pick up this stuff, we can't get better weapons to fight the sharks. Let's be bold. Uh, and I only just now realized the diver count that we have going on here. That's admittedly a bit of a problem. Maybe a defensive strategy would be wise. You guys watch there? I'm gonna watch here. That's good. Oh no, you were supposed to watch my back! What happened to that? Use toxic, not bleed? Uh, yeah, I guess for this map you're right. Let's try that. I personally have such a loathing for bleed that I use it almost automatically. Like, I, if I am a shark, bleed is my personal, personal nemesis weapon, so to speak. Also, cool tapeworm fact, the guy once had his tapeworm get- Oh, I remember that story! That was the weirdest story! Where, where was that guy? South America or something? Incredibly improbable, but it did happen. Oh man, I gotta post- when, Okay, when this gets uploaded to YouTube, I will post the link to that story, because that was just a cool story. 
bizarre and very sad for the men, but yeah. It's always interesting to me when uh, you have multicellular animals uh, basically uh, getting cancer and then that cancer kind of becomes its own single cellular species all on its own. Like, um, that's a good example. Oh, um, cancer, there, there's a kind of, um, canine cancer um, that dogs can get, basically. Uh, it's actually sexually transmitted, ironically enough. Um, not ironic, but, uh, oddly enough. Um, basically, how it worked is that sometime, long time ago in the past, uh, a dog got cancer. And then a dog, uh, was, uh, interacting with another dog. I don't know, maybe it was, like, biting another dog or, you know, mating with that other dog. And then, um, oh, there's another shark shield there already. Well, we've got two now. And, uh, it transmitted some of the cancer cells to that other dog. And then the second, and the cancer cells actually managed to live in that second dog long enough to grow and get transmitted to a third dog. And then the third dog got cancer, which then got transmitted to the fourth dog, and so on and so forth. Until now, it is an incredibly common form of canine disease. It's not actually incredibly common. It's relatively common. But yeah, this has only happened a couple of times. Um, and it's almost always within the same species, like, um, uh, Tasmanian Devils? out in Tasmania, they're actually just getting wiped out by, um, transmissible cancer. Um, clam, I think there's a species of clam that has it. There's one in hamsters. That's actually transmitted by mosquitoes, I think. Um, but yeah, the tapeworm thing was the only instance I know of where, uh, cancer developed in one organism and then got transmitted to a whole other species, and that whole other species got the first species cancer. So, I did not get any kills. Because one, I killed at least one thing. Anyway, yeah, exactly. It's it's cool in theory. It's super not cool for the things that have this cancer. Like like I mentioned, the Tasmanian devils. Uh, they are already endangered due to loss of habitat and a whole bunch of other problems. But they have the but they keep getting these facial tumors, which just grow over their faces and make it, make it incredibly painful for them to eat. And because they fight a lot, they keep biting one another's tumors. And when a Tasmanian devil bites the tumor of another Tasmanian devil, they can pick up some of those cancer cells. And uh, then the second devil can get face cancer and get two painful tumors all over their face, which is not cool. I don't actually know how that study happened. Uh, I need to research it more. I just remember seeing it on a list of, a couple different lists of, um, transmissible cancers. So people have gotten into some really weird research over the years. Well, Roger, what I keep wondering about is clams. Like, how did people figure that one out? How did people even figure it out that clams have cancer? As you get some clam researchers, if you look at enough clams, you start to notice something, something going wrong. Hamsters, I actually could see that from figuring that out, because hamsters have been used as a model organism a couple times. I mean, think about it. They share a lot of the same traits with mice. They're small, easy to keep, um, they breed like crazy, so you can make more of them very quickly if you need a bunch to experiment on. Um, I don't know about the mosquitoes part, though. That's a bit weird. If I'm wrong about that, then I will put a correction in the YouTube comments. So, when this goes up there. So yeah, there's a canine one, Tasmanian devil one, clams. There's another one relatively recently that I can't quite remember. There's something cool, though. Not really happened in humans, aside from that tapeworm incident, though. Point being, if your, uh, friend or relative has cancer, don't be scared you're gonna catch it. You're not. That's not how cancer works the vast majority of the time. This is a breach map? Yeah, we need flares, for sure. Speaking of, uh, 
cancer, cancer cells, which are incredibly uh, successful. Um, I haven't seen it, so I can't vouch for it. But uh, the movie uh, uh, that they're making of the immortal life of Henrietta Lacks is out this week on HBO, I believe. Um, I uh, just heard the excellent Radio Lab episode they did about it. They did a rerun uh, to coincide with the movie. And, um, yeah. Like I said, I don't know if the movie's any good. The stars Oprah Winfrey, that doesn't necessarily mean it's good or bad. But, um, if you are all interested in the story of Henrietta Lacks, I do recommend the Radio Lab episode, if you like podcasts. Um, Henrietta Lacks, in case you don't know, was a woman who, um, back in the days of, uh, polio being a thing, um, had, uh, came to the doctor with, uh, advanced cervical cancer, uh, and she, uh, had a biopsy taken of her cancer, and, uh, even though Henrietta herself died, she, um, the cancer proved incredibly good at living in, outside of her body, in culture, basically, and scientists were able to use those cells to grow the polio virus, uh, which then got used to make the polio vaccine, which then saved, you know, hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of thousands of people. I should say hundreds or thousands of people. I don't know about hundreds of thousands of people. Maybe. Anyway, saved them from uh, living out their lives, from dying or living out their lives in an iron lung, which I think everybody can agree is a miserable existence. Problem is, uh, there's all kinds of weird social dynamics um, surrounding the story of Henrietta. Um, she was a black woman uh, being treated by white doctors and her existence was basically erased. Um, her cells were spread all over the world and used as, in medical experiments uh, without her name attached. They were known only as HeLa cells. Or Henrietta Lacks. Well, hi to you two. I forgive you for not saying hi at the start. Um, that'll help. Oh, no it won't because the shark took it out. Anyway, uh, Henrietta's uh, very existence was practically erased from uh, people's knowledge of her. Like, like, people knew a lot about the cells, but they didn't know who they came from, or how, or her story, or anything about her, really. Until this journalist, uh, Rebecca Skloot, came along and wrote a great book called The Immortal Life of Henrietta Lacks. And, uh, now it's being made into a movie. The Lacks family got some recognition for their, um, mother's, uh, contribution, and grandmother's sister's contribution to medical science. Um... Yeah. I know there's been some controversy within the family about the movie. Like, some people are not super happy about the way that Henrietta is portrayed, etc. Um. But I don't know. I'm probably gonna see the movie. I think it's a great story. It needs to be told, etc. Always important to recognize previously unrecognized contributions. The fact that her own family really didn't know about how her cancer helped save thousands of lives until relatively recently is kind of a tragedy, so. Oh, neurotoxin, yeah. That's better. So yeah, I don't know showtimes, I don't know when this movie's coming out, I only just heard the Radio Lab episode this today and was like, oh hey, that's coming out this week, the movie thing. But uh, yeah, I'll post a link to the Radio Lab episode in the uh, YouTube comments and uh, hopefully people can uh, go listen to that even if you don't get HBO. Radio Lab is free and they do excellent work. Um, Radio Lab is probably my top two or three science shows, if not my, if not the top. Gastropod's pretty good too, but they're but Radio Lab's a little bit broader in scope. You 
say they should deal with it? What, with the, uh... The Lax family? I don't know. I think they, they, I think... I don't know what I think about that. It's a complicated issue. until uh, Rebecca Sploot came along and started asking them questions and was like, hey, you know your mom did this amazing thing for medicine, right? Um, nobody had told them. You don't, you can't really, you can't really get credit for something if you don't even know that's not, that, that you deserve it. Ah, yeah. Oh good, you're safe. Stop screaming! You're not in the jaws of the sharks anymore. something pretty close. We can do kind of the same thing with ears and other very simple structures right now. Like, we can print, 3D print sort of collagen scaffolds, which also are white. And then we can layer cells onto them uh, and sort of, or sort of bathe in the cells, and the cells will take root and take root, I should say, and um, grow into living, very simple structures like ears. Ears are simple. They don't really have to do anything. It's just like cartilage and <laughs> that would be awesome. I would, uh, I would love to see that. Just some, some, like, like, uh, you know, one of the hosts who's gaining self-awareness just, it's just like, oh, everything was edible the whole time! And just, like, falls to the ground and starts eating chocolate. That would be funny. Alright, I'm gonna, uh, let's see, what time is it? I'm probably gonna do one more game, uh, and then call it a night. Um see how far we get. Oh, wow, that was fast. All right. Galleon. I don't know a Galleon map already tonight, but, um, but that would be an awesome way for it to end. And since I'm wrecking the whole world anyway, why not, you know? I would think Florg would have to be a little bit shorter, more green-haired and orange to be king of the Opelopas, but hey. I was talking about the actual chocolate barrel factory. I don't know about you. My goodness, your mind goes into dirty places. Says the girl who earlier was talking about cervical cancer in dogs. Whatever. Do I want to mine for the first one? Yes, I do. That's a good choice. I'm sticking with it. I will be polite. Lighten up, dude. I think I like I've encountered just a noob before somewhere. What type of good luck have been? I am full of regrets tonight. 
Anyhow. I'm looking over the list of sort of sciencey stuff I wanted to talk about. We still didn't talk about river piracy from last time, but there isn't really much to talk about that with, honestly. With, honestly. That's such a cool skin. It's got animation on it. Uh, there was a glacier in Alaska. The, uh, the Cusco Walsh, I think is how you pronounce it, glacier. Uh, it used to be ba basically a wall of ice that was uh, slowly melting to form two distinct separate rivers. Uh, but uh, it eroded away enough recently, last year I think, that uh, the wall of ice was basically dissolved and um, now all of the water is going down just one river making the other river basically dry up. And scientists have dubbed this river piracy. Because one river is now stealing all the water from the other river. So, and this is the first documented instance of that due to climate change, so that's fun. A little depressing. Oh, you're going albino? Daring. Albinos are visible. Where are you? Coming in this way? What did I say about albinos being visible? I saw you like a million miles away. Alright, slammed through the door, phrase 45. Thanks for watching the stream. Um, appreciate it. Hope to see you again soon.
itself is outside. That's a bad place for it to be. I will not be going outside. Actually, yes I will, because, uh... There's a shark shield! Hey! Shark shield should have extended up there. Yeah, see, I'm half in and half out of it. It's not fair. Sneaky shark. time on Saturdays, but I'm not going to be here. I'm going to be in downtown DC marching in the March for Science. So, um, I am not going to be able to stream that night, because frankly, this is something which is pretty high priority for me. So, I will see you all again on Tuesday, next Tuesday, if you want to tune in. I will be playing Subnautica, because my usual schedule is Tuesdays is Subnautica, Thursdays is Depth, and Saturdays is a game TBD. Um, I'll figure that out later this week. I'm ta I've been taking. I've gotten some great suggestions from everybody, and I'm gonna be figuring out what's gonna be good and popular to stream. So, um, keep in mind my YouTube channel. I have been uh, uploading some more videos. If you're looking for some backlogs and you just want more of my voice right now. Um, and until Tuesday, thank you all so much for watching. I really appreciate it. Hope you all have a wonderful evening. Take care, guys.